welcome to the Gospel reading and reflection for the fifth Sunday in Lent, where Jesus teaches his disciples about the way in which he will be glorified by God, and a voice from heaven is heard to affirm his teaching. And I'll begin with a prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, let us be wheat sown in the earth to be harvested for you. We want to follow wherever you lead. Give us fresh hope and joy in serving you all the days of our lives. Amen. And the scripture reading comes from John chapter 12 verses 20 to 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew went with Philip, and they told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me he must follow me and where I am there shall my servant be also if anyone serves me the father will honor him now my soul is troubled and what should I say father save me from this hour no it is for this reason that I have come to this hour father glorify your name then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it, and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John does describe Jesus's emotional and spiritual anguish as his hour approaches. What is this inner struggle which Jesus underwent as he anticipates his hour of trial and confrontation with those who sought to destroy him? It certainly would be a natural reaction for anyone to turn away from suffering and humiliation. And Jesus knew that he could have chosen to avoid the cross and the scandal and shame it would have brought him. That is why he posed the question, Father, save me from this hour. Jesus courageously chose to suffer and die, not only in obedience to his Father, but for our sake and for our salvation. He freely embrace the cross without any resentment or self-pity because he knew that the cross would bring glory to his father and victory for us. It is at this precise moment of Jesus's total acceptance of the cross that the father speaks audibly for all to hear. The Father confirms that Jesus' hour of exaltation will indeed bring glory to God's name. The Gospels tell us that the voice of God was present at all the decisive moments of Jesus' life. It came at his baptism at the River Jordan when Jesus began his 
public ministry and it came at the Mount of Transfiguration when Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus in the presence of three disciples. After Jesus had told his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and lay down his life for their sake. On this occasion, however, Jesus is, describes his approaching hour as both a judgment of this world and his being lifted up from the earth. The judgment Jesus had in mind here is the driving out of Satan as the ruler of the earth. Jesus saw the cross as defeat for Satan, who sought to rule humankind, enslaved by sin and the fear of death. His cross not only wins pardon from guilt, but freedom to live a new way of love according to God's wisdom and the promise of eternal life. John the Evangelist saw the cross not as shame and defeat for Jesus, but as a throne of glory from which Jesus triumphed over sin, Satan and death itself. And we have to ask ourselves, do we believe in the power of Jesus' cross? And I'll say a prayer. Dear Lord, by your cross you have redeemed the world. May we always have the courage to embrace your will for our lives. And though it may produce a cross on earth for us, it will surely produce a crown in heaven that will last forever. Amen. May the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A family prayer activity. Family life is often a balancing act in which there is a constant need to prioritize and attend to a variety of competing needs. Um, and the value of putting others' needs ahead of our own. In family life, learning that when we make personal sacrifices to serve others, we gain so much more than we may have lost. And as you gather as a family, talk about how important it is to your family life to gladly serve one another and ask each other to consider the last time that another family member asked for help. And what was your response? Did you cheerfully try to honour the request or did you ask why me? And then read to, um, today's gospel um, and think about how do you think Jesus would want us to respond when someone in our family asks for help. And invite each family member to make a commitment for the next week to try to respond cheerfully to requests for help and then pray together, asking God's help with this commitment. Thank you for sharing the gospel with me, and it brings me great joy to share the gospel with you, and may it ever bring you closer to Jesus, and take care, and um, bye-bye.